Welcome to Let's Talk Geek 86, recorded the 28th of March, 2012, on this Wednesday evening. Uh, in the show, we talk about cloud storage, what you want, what you don't want, uh, 40 megabits ADSL coming to South Africa at some point, and Angry Birds in Space. Welcome to episode 86 of Let's Talk Geek. We're going to do this really fast because we're late. And in the show is <laughs> me, Jan. Jan. Tim Hawk. The, the mixer. mixer. Woo. And into the show. Cool. <laughs> uh, events. Uh, uh, of course. This was recorded on the 28th of March. It's a Wednesday. Go look it up if you don't believe me. Look on at Star Days for the next date that we'll be on. Yes. Uh, things happening at the moment. House for Hack. Uh, they've opened like a Janusburg branch. Cool. Uh, working in... B. It's the first time Pretoria's had something first. Uh, yeah, uh, Mark Clark. So I'm trying to remember what, he, what his company's come. It's uh, Jumping Bean. Okay. I think uh, is hosting them that way. But they're busy building a energy shield. Um, the, unfortunately, unfortunately, the first one is tonight, uh, which is the introduction to Arduino. But every Wednesday going forward, so the next is 4th of, April, 4th of April, um, is energy logger basics costs to be confirmed. Um, well worth it. Go check it out. So we will be doing one show from there. We will try to. I think that's not a bad idea. Sounds good. <coughs> and uh, Alexis, Python for energy logging. Uh, talking about Pythons, um, that's not very geeky. There are apparently two it snakes is. on the loose in Johannesburg. But unfortunately, this is not Python, the programming language. <laughs> um, AIM Wild Expo, 30th of April to the first, uh, 30th of March to the 1st of April. Yeah, it's just basically wildlife and hunting expo. Um, uh, handguns, rifles, uh, bow bow hunting. There's apparently a South African champion going to be doing some exhibition shooting shooting at the AIM Expo. This will be in Tabatswane uh, for the older people in the crowd. That's for Trekkerwoogte, the old Sun Sun Lom Centrum Stadium that was built there in Trekkerwoogte over the weekend. And then the 14th to the 15th of April is Upcon. Cool, yes. If you've not been to an upcon, where have you been? Go, go check it out. It's definitely <laughs> well worth it. Uh, we did a recording there last year. We're hoping to do one there this year. Um, we just, uh, Some of our hosts are a bit busy. So if anybody wants to be a host on the day and come and do recordings, give us a shout. Also, uh, one last event uh, this day in geek history. Um, to, uh, this day in 1999 was marks the, the first screening of, the f of Futurama. So we're the future of Futurama. Um, no. Good news, everyone. We're not Futurama. <laughs> You're on the wrong channel. <laughs> but don't change now. Stick around. <laughs> I promise I'll be <coughs> less Farnsworth from here on in. Why did you put that under how to contact us? <laughs> so that we would see, see it. it. <laughs> well done. Sorry. Go mix it. Sorry. Okay. All right. No. Um, fire extinguishers. A new kind of fire extinguisher system. Uh, I'm assuming this was put in by the mixer. Yes. So uh, uh, I've actually read the piece. So have I. So go. <laughs> All right. Cool. So um, what's interesting about it is um, th that they say that the assumption that firefighters operate under is sort of surround and smother. So you, you surround the fire in water and then, you know, you try to and then you try to put it out by pretty much coating it with yes. water. And, uh, and that's actually ineffective. So what these researchers have found is a way to spray like a, a fine mist over the fire. And when a single one of those droplets hits the flames, it actually um, it, like does... Evaporates. Yeah, and does cover it, covers, it, covers it four times more than a normal fire extinguisher would. Very interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it basically gives better coating, and I would imagine also does a bit of oxygen starvation. I would hope so. And um, this, the, the, the reason that this is related to NASA is because um, this thing was de uh, developed um, it, you know, out of the, the same sort of principles as NASA uses in, its, in the burn chamber of its, um, of its rocket propulsion engine, if I'm yeah, not so mistaken. So it's actually to spread the fuel out efficiently. Yes. So um, how to spread the the fire extinguishing fluid thingies out more efficiently. Very, yes, very, very cool. cool. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, next one is HP engineers shoot laptops with electricity guns. I must say, I, I, I just I, want the electricity I, I, gun. I, I read this and then I watched the video and it was like, cool. And it's got this awesome gun. And you're looking, you're waiting for this like huge arc, like from a Tesla coil. And it goes, zzz, zzz. it's like, okay. oh, why? It's basically to test static electricity. So when they're testing the laptops, you know, when you shock, um, things to make sure things are earthing correctly. Yes, and um, HP's actually survived this. Yeah, 
So it's several thousand volts, but it is it's like but it's a know, static discharge. Yes. Yeah. But it's not look it's when, when you're really much more reliable than walking around in socks. <laughs> and then no more cats. cats. Yes. <laughs> you you wear the cat but suit, strip all the cats on you. Serious now, this notebook you're sitting at. Are you having discharge issues on this one? No. No. So mine as well. I'm on a net uh, Acer netbook. Mac? Yeah, and mine's an al- aluminium body. Oh, that doesn't help you a lot, yeah. But my Toshiba's got, I think it's from, since I added the uh, biometrics, I get this discharges on the biometric sensor. Yes, so I understand. But I mean, take the sensor out again. And you don't really get discharged on notebooks. No, well, they, they're saying it's more if you do. So if you, if you have to charge... It's a part of spec as a point of interest. Yes. Yes. Okay, yeah. so it's yes, part yeah. of their standard test. It's just, it's just cool because they shoot a gun with ele- an electricity. Yes, robot um, they also show you the robots that they use oh, for testing. So the testing coolness the is more in the fact of the gun yes. rather than the spec. Than yeah. the the stand, it's a standard spec. That's oh. what I was wondering. Is it like part of mill spec? Is it part of the… You know, is they've got requirements that it has, it has to survive a certain amount. Um, so there's a certain amount for the keys, which is lower than for the outer body, and then they, uh, which I think was fifteen thousand volts or something mm. odd like that. But they actually crank it all up way to t- twenty-seven thousand to see what happens. Cool. In other news, Angry Bird Space is finally here. Awesome. Oh, that's so is awesome. Good. If you haven't blown your money on that yet, you don't why have not? to. Yeah, if you if you're on a proper operating system. Exactly. Yeah, but I'm playing it on the tablet large. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's so cool. I would, I would also rather just buy it on, on iPad. Um, the whole scene, the whole science around the, the gravity. Oh, it's just brilliant. And, and interesting stuff that have, that have come up around this uh, because the game is so popular and talking about the paid versus free option, you know, Android guys are always like, ha ha, we have it for free and it's ad supported and blah, blah, blah. Is, and this is actually a debate I've, I've had on Google Plus with, with an Android developer. Um, his mm-hmm. name is... To Toby Kurin, I, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. We supposed to have on at some point. Yeah, I to do that. Um, and uh, I, I posted an article from Ars Technica, which all of the international media carried about a new study, which showed that serving or, or ad-supported apps drain your battery more than more than paid apps without ads do. And um, if you read the Ars article, I'm emphasizing this um, because you can you can read it anywhere, but Ars has the detail. The, the essence of it is that it actually fire the, it pulls the ad, but then parts of the hardware that it doesn't need anymore remain active. So, I mean, there's this um, speculation around why that is. Um, but the bottom line is, is that only 30% of the actual used battery power, or less than 30%, actually goes towards the game. Um, That's That's interesting. Yes, it is. So uh, now the the, the contentious issue was that the study, um, uh, that that uh, a lot of the, I'm going to call them fanboys, climbed onto, is uh, the the, the research, if I'm not mistaken, is sponsored by Microsoft. The other device, the Microsoft device that they looked at was uh, Windows Mobile 6.5. And so people are like, oh, you know, comparing it to, but it's not actually comparative. Um, not the part, not the parts that we're talking about here. Anyway, I haven't read the other parts, but at least this wasn't compared to other devices. It's compared to yourself. He runs a little program called EProf on the Android device to to see what the battery usage is like, and um, and so I mean from that he can detect what the CPU is being used for, or, or just you what know what what the resources are being yeah. used for. In we're going to quickly talk about the the, the what's it smoke uh, with the Android smoke the end of the uh, Windows Phone. Thing, the big controversy in America. Oh, yeah, let's, while we're talking about controversies, yes, that was interesting. So ba- yeah. for those who don't know, there's, there's a competition, uh, a standing competition running in the States called Smoked by Windows Phone. It was started... Uh, wait, 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 say that again. Smoked by Windows, Windows Phone. Phone. So the, the challenge is you yeah. must rock up with your smartphone um, uh, and this started at CES, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the, there was a Microsoft rep there and he said, you rock up with your smartphone, they pose a challenge, you agree to the challenge and... Um, and then the guy who can do it the fastest wins. What type of challenges? So, for example, um, they would say, look up a, a, a restaurant four stars or higher. Okay. Um, or look up this location, the map. Or, in this case, look up the weather in two cities. Yes. Um, so, all right. No, that's the introduction. <coughs> anyway, that's, that's the thing. So, they're doing this. And what happened is one guy happened to rock up there with his Android phone. Um, and they said, cool, let's do the test. Now, one of the things he happened to have done is he'd, first of all, let it eat the wake up so you know the unlock screen he hadn't done it's pretty much he had it that you tap it it unlocked okay and the the challenge they happened to give him was give me the loca- you know give me the temperature of two cities in the in the world and he one of his apps on his home screen was a weather app with two cities so these, uh, and literally you went tap tap there <laughs> <laughs> which he won yeah 
Now, you know, normally at that point is to go, okay, cool, we've been doing this, you won, cool, but you won because of this, these reasons. And, you know, like I said, great marketing would have been the only way to beat us with an Android is to be ahead, you know, to basically have the whole thing set up before, you know, before we have. What did they did? They basically threw them out the store. Yeah, eventually. and to add insult to injury, they were like, Would, wouldn't you stand in front of this banner and say, I got smoked by a Windows phone? Because that's part of the thing. If you lose, then you have to you know, yeah, yeah, stand yeah. somewhere, stand with the two phones together and go, I got smoked by a Windows phone. And if you win, you stand together and you go, I beat a Windows phone. Right? So like, <laughs> they're like, oh, won't you stand in front, of this, in front of this banner and say that you got smoked by a Windows phone, which yeah. you obviously didn't. No. No, for, for Foz and they forced him to take the photo. Yeah, yeah. So you and got so, the photo, yeah. So he, he took to Twitter and uh, this got picked up by the Microsoft employee who's responsible for this campaign. He started the campaign. He was the one at CES conducting the competition there. And, uh, and so he's like, okay, no, I'll, let's make this right. I'll give you a laptop, a phone. Uh, yeah, I think it's a laptop, a phone, and an apology. Um, and okay. then email me, please. Yeah. So it just was it was a really bad piece of publicity. A bad me. piece of... Yeah. Just more, you, you're out there to prove and somebody accidentally happened to prove you wrong and then just... Take it on the chin. You basically destroyed your whole... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hawkey's corrected me. He said he actually blogged uh, and it got picked up by Reddit and hit the front page of Reddit. Yeah. Oh, okay. well. Yeah. Look, not to say this, it, you know, the Windows phone's normally one. We're not saying Android's better than the one or Windows better than the other. Just that we were talking about how it's just, just badly handled. Yeah, by, yeah. By them. It, and it shows you. It's, it's all like, so, I mean, it's in the little things. <coughs> like, all, everything is in the little things. Yes. About, so just, just pay attention to, to the details, guys. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just going to make people angry. Uh, one other thing I um, meant to just mention with the new Angry Bird app, sorry, we bounced mm. around a bit, yeah. is there's a paid section. Even okay. if you've paid for it on the iPad, there's a bit there where you can enhance it or get extra levels that you've got to pay one, one dollar for. Uh, DLC. Which I've found irritated with. Because, you know, I've paid for the app. You know, I pay, it's $5 or something yes, like yes. that. And now all of a sudden in the middle of it, they sort of like, no, no, we want you to pay for it. And it's like, if you want that, make me buy another app. Yes. Don't Which is what they usually do. Yeah, like I know this is the first time. I just, personally, that irritates Haven't they me. released levels, though, for the other games? They auto-release them and you get them for free. Oh. There's been updates. So, Day Zero DLC on my Android or my iPhone app. Fail. Mm. Seriously. EA has been getting panned for this for Mass Effect. Don't, <laughs> just don't go learn from the people <laughs> who have been getting, like, petitions against them for doing this. Having said that, otherwise, the game is great. Uh, we was talking about the physics and stuff like that because we've got space and you go into places with gravity and then so you actually got to work out and I would actually say it's quite a good learning tool if you're trying to work out and explain to kids or something how gravity works and look it's not perfect you know distance away and all the rest of it but it does Doesn't give matter. a good, good idea of how it works cool um, um, lots should we, of fun should yeah. we skip over the next topic and instead go straight yes. to the cloaking device cool. yeah so um, there's a there's a cloaking device uh, that you can build from off the sh this this headline this headline was a little misleading. It was build a build a cloaking device from off the shelf Sh super, super con Come on, where do you get off the shelf <laughs> and make magnetic tape? Yeah. So um, it, okay, it, sorry. Uh, Ars um, Technica article. Thank you. Yo. We we ran with this article. <laughs> so um, yeah. No, no, uh and and there's also a technicality here. It's not a Star Trek cloak. It's not something that makes you invisible. It's not even. A, a cloaking device from more from harder sci-fi where you shield your emissions or whatever the case might be, might be. This is a magnetic cloak. So basically, um, you take you take two magnets um, and you make it a, an or you take, two, that, you take an object and it, it usually distorts the magnetic field around it. Yeah. And so the idea is to make the object or to make it appear as if there's nothing there. So there's no distortion of the magnetic field. It's as if there was nothing there magnetically. Now, if you look at it, it's almost like the, the principle they seem to be using, almost like using two lenses. Um, to cancel one another out. Ca cancel one another out. So yep. the one magnetic one bends the field one way and the other one bends it the other way and the two together... Yes. So Mark 1 eyeball still sees the object, but if you're using a magnetic sensor of some kind, you won't, you won't ever know it's there. Like what? what? What magnetic sensor are we talking about? I mean, like... There's lots of things that measure EM well, in field strength. Um, you know, it's quite also okay. a lot of the times with... with the new cloaking stuff, I think that's they're using for the, you know, the, the hidden devices. They're using EMF and things like that to not pick them up. So it now hides that. So there we come. So you can make your, your next super jet fighter. 
will be more invisible than it yeah, is now. Except that you use radar for, to detect them. So, I'm, I mean, thank you. That's yeah. okay. I'm trying to think. What <laughs> do you no, use? But even if you think about now, then they've got the ones that deflect the radio and make it invisible so to radar. So, if you want yeah, to hide your wallet one. on the beach and never be able to find it, use this technology. Because um, a metal detector won't find it. <laughs> Perhaps. That's what I'm trying to figure out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> But um, in any case, yeah. yeah. A- another interesting story to come out. Th- this is uh, we're catching up two weeks worth of stories yeah. here. Is that um, there's uh, there was a, a research company out of out of China who claimed to have created a graphene battery that basically charges itself. Um, what? Yeah. So well, that's not actually what they claimed. Okay. Well, they said they bought this battery that that seemed to be providing power. Yes. Right. Now they say what they actually think is it's actually a thermal. It. it Basically, it's now translating a high thermal energy to a low thermal energy and then providing power that way is w- was what they say they're assuming. And because, you know, that's a second law of thermodynamics. Energy cannot be... What's it? Oh, no, no, it's... Cre- it's uh, oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. The Neither can be created nor... St- you can't make something out of nothing. Yeah, yeah. So what the, 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 the second the, law of thermodynamics is entropy. So that's not it. That's something else. Anyway, okay. uh, yeah, it's it's one Einstein, I believe, who said that you can't make something out of nothing. No, it's one of the are getting anyway. <laughs> it is one of the thermodynamic laws. Anyway, um, so what did they claim? Th- th- their claim was that where the power was coming from was uh, the heat. So it's basically translating so, heat into energy. Okay. Okay. A lot of other people said, well, it actually looks like you're trying to say that this is beating the second law of thermodynamics, which you can't do. They say it's actually a chemical one, and why this is getting so much uh, attention, I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, I mean, there, there, was, there, there, was, there was a bit of a second law debate. Um, and uh, I thought that was... Just skip all of this and let's go to um, what Terminator. Give us some atomic <laughs> battery swap. Well, what phone. is interesting is that out of this, if you, if you start searching for the, the, kind of, um, the kind of technology they're building out of or the kind of advancements they're making in battery tech mm. using graphene. Graphene is this magical material they discovered, um, you know, that, that's, that's had, that's had like, uh, that seems to be creating a lot of breakthroughs in the electronic space. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so the one thing they've also found is uh, uh, using uh, graphene on standard lithium iron uh, batteries and, and just uh, you know sort of aerating it. I mean that's I've really oversimplified okay. it. Um, is it a type of metal graphene? I have never seen graphene in my life, so I can't. Was answer it that a question. fluid or was a it graphene? They're talking about here is part is like graphite. Yes, so it's solid. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. No. And uh, and anyway, so like tennis rackets. Tennis rackets are made out of graphite. Okay. Yeah. So and graphene is a type of graphite. That's so, what we say. So graphene <laughs> is a gra- is. Made from the same stuff as graphite, but just in a different form. And, okay. it, and it's layered. Yes. So uh, anyway, so this interesting advancement um, would make your battery last 10 times longer and charge faster using it's normal, yes, yes. a normal lithium battery. That's, I, I thought that was quite no, that's, interesting. That, that would be great. Yeah, yeah. Um, seeing that battery technology needs to catch up with the phone technology. Yeah, absolutely. At, at one hell of a rate. Yeah, so um, I don't know if you put this in Johan the the free um, the free educational satellite TV channel that was launched in South Africa. No, I didn't. Okay, um, I did. Um, I sorry, did read yeah. through. So I'm just trying to. Remi- hmm. No, it's, a, Funda it's TV? Ivers is working with somebody to actually start doing some free television channels into South Africa. Some of the concerns around it is obviously not curriculum aligned. Yes. Also, the other thing is that you need to get a new dish, a new decoder and stuff to use. I it. can't use a standard free to no. decoder. Well, I, I don't know about that. It's not the, on DSTV and it's not on... Yeah, but you can't actually catch the free to air channels on it with a DSTV decoder anymore. It's actually very irritating. Okay. Just bear in mind, DSTV has almost all the space on that satellite. So, yes, anybody new, you won't get space on the same satellite as DSTV. So, any other service, you are going to install a second dish. Um, I actually can't at this stage comment too much we're trying to get all of these guys cool. to find out what it's about uh, also reading the thing they, they say free but it actually doesn't sound like it's free it also, almost sounds like you're going to pay with it by SMSs so you know there's a lot of irregularities in, in the thing but cool we'll, we'll wait and see what it's about they're supposed to be providing a lot of stuff from I think it's MIT and, and Stanford, uh, Stanford in America um which I know they've got a lot of open course stuff and stuff com- coming from there. So I don't know if they're going to be re- basically replaying what's on the websites or if they actually have contracts with these guys and going to be... It's going to be interesting to see what they do. Yes. 
Yeah, well, look, they never interacted with Twitter and stuff like that um, and message boards and stuff like that, but they'll be run by the local guys. Um, but when they say interactive, it's actually sort of sounded more like they're going to provide a platform for the students to be able to talk to each other. Um, I didn't quite read that they're going to actually have people answering their questions. Mm. Usually people kind of default to mix it for that as like a, as like a social you know, Another big one at the moment is Peptext. Okay. That's actually an interesting platform. Oh, yeah, Peptext as in Pep the, Pep, the store. The store. Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember seeing Peptext. It's obviously not something that Yeah, it's actually growing a lot because, use, uh, well, the thing is around Peptext is quickly, I don't want to get too much into it, is um, it's free. So we, even with Mixit, we're still paying for your bandwidth. Peptext is zero rated on all the networks. I wonder how they got that right. Very simple. Who's the biggest seller of airtime? Yeah, Pep, absolutely. Yeah. So, so Pep is a major distributor for a lot of these guys. Sell C, MTN, and Vodacom, if I'm not mistaken, especially so, the lower end stuff. So if you've got kids and you want to look at a different platform, it's going to really cost you nothing. Look at Pep text. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So um, the next up is graphene being awesome again. <laughs> wow, wait, 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 where are you now? <laughs> Super capacity in your optical drive DVD rewrite are used to burn graphene capacitors. Yes. I have no idea. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm trying to remember that. I, I know the statement is that Blu-ray will be our last distributed media. So why are we well, doing things like on more, DVD, DVD? No, but there's always going to be a market for, for mass storage that's more effective and more reliable. Um, so Blu-ray will be our last distribution. Yeah, but you'll still have hard drives. So it'll be the last Blu-ray will be the last way that you'll get music or, or videos or via DVD. And stuff, yeah. But in future, is there DRM for USB yet for for USB flash? Because I mean, Blu-ray has like major DRM that the guys use so that That's they can put their movies point. and stuff. In yeah, but you could still DRM. You don't need to DRM the, the USB drive. You just DRM the, the content. The content. On the drive. I know, but the, the point is if you can actually protect the medium, then that gives the guys one more thing to break. No, so if, if you just DRM the content, that, that's crackable. That's so easily well, crackable. The, the, the theory around it is that we will get to a stage where you will not have a library of movies in your home. Everything will be downloaded. You will be streaming it from services. Yes, down here in Africa, we'll see how long it really happens. But at the end of the day, you'll be enjoying all your content and ba yeah, basically, as needed. You will stream into the box, and the box will be uh, encrypted, and it will use the onboard chips, this new, the, those new security chips mm -hmm. that got on the new motherboards, um, and basically, we'll use that to decrypt and hold the keys. But to come back to the story, so super com what? Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's actually um, a, a capacitor is an energy. So this isn't actually about st storage. This is Thank energy you. storage. So it's another form. It's another way to, to get energy into your electronics, uh, but using a DVD rewriter to, to burn a capacitor. I mean, that's just awesome. Now, and is this creating awesome. capacitors or yes. charging capacitors? Yeah, manufacturing a capacitor out of graphene using a DVD rewriter. Oh, okay, cool. So no, it's, that's totally a different approach to what I... Yeah, so so okay. it's a cheap way of, of basically getting a little laser burner. Um, I don't know how cheap it is. Uh, but but it's a but DVD it's, rewriter. It's a, at least an interesting way. Yeah. <laughs> well, DVD rewriter plus the graphene. True, true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to guess the graphene. Anyway, is the I'm, I'm going to skip the next one. We've done a lot of very sciencey stuff for, but let's let's. Just <laughs> no, there. but but we will come back. We'll come back. We'll come back. The we'll neutrinos. Come back. Oh. It's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. What's the reckon? Sheena worked from Tabal. <laughs> ah, there's another bit. No, um, no. Browser Quest. MMO HTML5. I love this because I deal with stuff so much. Uh, it is uh, basically uh, Mozilla has gone out and they've taken all the really cool things that are the new HTML5 standards. So it's web sockets, it's uh, offline storage. Um, they're also doing using Canvas and most importantly the audio uh, HTML5 audio stuff. And they've basically gone off and, and done an online game. Um, it's basically it harkens back to the old days if you, you, you used to play the games with the little guy with his sword and used to hammer away um, but this is multiplayer it works and it runs totally in your browser mm. it looks like one of those top down <coughs> top down RPGs so almost a little pokemon -y. I don't know what you call those types of RPGs um, so yeah is a third person view uh, no it's top down no it's not third person view it's top down yeah. okay yeah, yeah. alright just no. asking yeah yeah no but it's uh uh, by the way, it eats battery life um, on, on the iPhone. 
Oh, that's the thing. It will run on your iPhone. It will run on Android, yeah. apparently. It is incredibly slow. I don't know if they're just taking a hammering because they recently launched. Mm. Um, but, oh my word, it took long to get the website open. And we couldn't actually get a screenshot for tonight's show because we couldn't sign in. Uh, so you get there and you have to type in something to sign in and you can't. It just takes too long. That sounds like their servers are melting. Yeah. yeah. What's so, nice about this though is it actually incorporates all the things that should be happening. So there's no plugins here. So there's no flash you need to install. This is your standard browser. Um, it basically downloads all the content into your browser so that when you shut it down and bring it back, you don't need to re-download all that stuff. Mm. So then after that, it's pretty much just, just the communication to the server where you've moved so that you can share that with your friends. Yes, yes. Then the big story in South Africa for the day was that Telcom has finally officially announced and its you know plans why? to I launch don't VDSL. Care. Why don't you care? Because they're only doing it into uh, these gated communities. Uh, not necessarily. So okay, they're launching. I'm, I'm going by the last my broadband article. Um, um, well, that was that, that was before today. Okay. So um, that was uh, that was one of the. Um, that's it, it, definitely where they're going to be trialing is, is in gated communities, but they're actually launching in uh, 53 nodes um, around the country. Did they give you a date? Uh, July 2012 is when they want to the, when they want to have everything built. And will the, the Turian be getting it? No, mm. not the trial. So, but the plan is for them over the next three to five years to rip up all their, well, rip up, to, to build, to put down these MSANs next to their existing ADSL infrastructure and then switch everybody um, away from the existing DSLAMs and, uh, and digital, what, what do they call it? Um, uh, it's the, the name of another, it's another acronym. I just can't remember. It's a three-letter acronym. But the, the existing ADSL infrastructure and switch away to these MSANs. Now, what these MSANs give you is that it, it lets, um, they, they really, that we got to speak to technical, technical guys today. And one guy, um, Alfonso Samuels, um, who's, uh, who's in, uh, in charge of, I think, network infrastructure stuff there, um, provisioning, I think, um, he um, emphasized that they, they get to, prov to give voice and data services off of, like, it's like a combined thing off of one port, if I'm not mistaken. Apparently, that's a big deal. And it's, prop and it's the reason they're actually able to do this. Um, so uh, that was interesting for, for those who are in the space. Um, then it lets them offer ADSL 2 plus. It lets them offer VDSL 2. That's up to 40 meg per second. Bonded VDSL. Um, I think that's up to 100 meg a second. And um, fiber to the home as well. So up to a gig a second. Fiber services, if cool. they want. Um, so, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I just wish they'd... Uh, my, my thing with this... Since you're would crack the nod for a trial. Everybody keeps on going and, and putting into gating community because that's cheap to do. So the fact that telecoms to going in there, it's sort of like, oh, well, we're losing people here. We're going to have to find a solution for that. But the rest of us that aren't in the gated communities also want solutions. Mm. I want more bandwidth. We want more bandwidth here. And it's, just, it's not coming. Yes, it's yes. just frustration from my side. Yeah, I yeah. Want and, and fiber is not going to move outside um, you know, massive cluster complexes like that, office parks, gated communities, estates, um, and new projects. Like if, yeah. they, if they launch you know, like a brand spank, if they build a new thing and they put – and they, you know, then They'll put fiber they'll instead put fiber, of copper. Yes. Yeah. Uh, with – that's probably going to be under the the idea that it's going to be monopolized, though. So, in other words, there will be one fiber provider for that complex, so that uh, be to make it financially feasible. Uh, because if you look at what's happening in Cape Town now, I remember some time ago those guys who can't pick up DSTV yes. in Clifton are having fiber put in. They have to foot the bill for that last mile fiber blowing. That's fifty thousand rand a pop. Thank you. That's how expensive it is, and to recoup those costs. No. Twenty. Uh, yes. Twenty. But wouldn't you pay twenty thousand? I would pay twenty thousand rand for fiber. Um, so if you you, one day uh, we have <laughs> yes, we'll yes, get one day we'll get yes. to. So so I I don't want to get people's hopes up, but it's this is step. this is not just for gated communities. This is an overhaul of telecoms network. But the big question is, when is Bitstream getting sorted out? Yes, that we're because talking about. 11th this, of November, apparently. All of this is all good and well. Without Bitstream, it's not going to mean anything. Well, it's just going to mean that there are no price cuts, that there'll be speeds. But, and that also depends on, on the price of Bitstream and IP Connect. So, there's, I mean, that, that, is a, that is a very, very 
uh, contentious. N- well, yeah, a very difficult topic to tackle because we don't. The thing about Bitstream is just that it opens things up a little more. The exact effects it of it re- remain to be seen. So, yeah. Well, it's going to help with fair trade. Yes, and and ISPs have shown that they're incredibly creative with even a nerfed product. And, and I use the term loosely here, but they, they call it a, a hobbled product, IP Connect. So we're getting into very technical things here. If you're really interested in these kinds of things, just go and Google it. There are plenty of articles on how this works. Or ask your friendlyhood, friendlyhood, friendly neighborhood ISP about IP Connect. I'm sure they'll be happy to yes. tell you all about it. But <sighs> Just not the technical staff that answer the phone. <laughs> but yeah, but the issue is that uh, the issue is that they feel that IP Connect is a hobbled product. And so... And the ISPs have been incredibly creative in what yeah, they can offer with just IP Connect. So I we'll see what happens from with IP Stream. I, ISP, I can't mention who, uh, sort of knowledge. They have more international bandwidth than they have local bandwidth, and they've paid less for the international bandwidth. Are they, the biggest hobbling point of getting bandwidth to the people is IP Connect. Yeah, that's, that's one thing. I mean, the other thing is fiber. So is national transit, which m- telecom controls the majority of. They've got 144,000 kilometers of fiber in the ground, as opposed to its competitors who have on the order of 5,000 kilometers of fiber each. I mean, that's a massive difference. You cannot move data from one point of the country to another point of the country without hitting telecom somewhere in between. And that apparently is still incredibly expensive. So uh, that needs to be looked at as well. Why is it expensive? Can the prices be cut? Can telecom be running more, be, be running more efficiently? Um, are they asking too much for it? Those are, those are, those are big, big questions yes. that need to be answered. Khan Academy. Yes. Have now released an iPad app. Okay, so what, what does that now involve? I know the Khan Academy. If it's, you it's, don't know, just go Google. That's but very cool. Um, basically, they've got an iPad app, so you can now download the videos to your iPad and watch them. Can later. you download? Yes. Okay, that's that's major. Yeah, okay. Um, I, I do have the app. Uh, I forgot we were talking about this otherwise. I, I must say, I've downloaded it. I, it is, the icon is sitting there, and I've not had time to click on it. Because that will be the first one I know about then that, that, that does allow you to download. Yeah. Where most of the other apps out there is actually just the front end to the library of media. So if this one allows you to download, yeah, that, that's actually awesome. No, no, you can that's, definitely. I did see the download button. Uh, and if I understood correctly, it works very similar to the uh, TED. So you can schedule a couple once to download. And even oh, go brilliant. In the background so TED also allows downloading. Oh, definitely, yeah, TED. Oh, and they, okay. they, used, they used to limit you to like 10, and then they removed the limit. Oh. So the TED one, I must, works really well. Question from the forum, yeah. uh, from the forum, from IRC, is does Khan Academy have an Android app? Not yet. Okay. I don't Ted know. has. They've been punting it heavily on both platforms as well, I, I see. Anyway. I see Ted is on your marketplace now. So yeah. for being I wonder what they make. paid for to, to, I don't know if you have to pay to get on those featured lists because they've That's been. That's a very good question. They've, 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 they've featured on Android and, or they were, these featured on Android and iOS market. That will so. be a good question at the next Google because there's some apps that do get to the first page which definitely don't have the money. So how do you actually get there? Is it truly really that you are performing very well? I think it, no, there are certain ones where you can see if they perform well, they get featured, and sometimes they just pay for it. And I, like I came across one iPad app that got featured. I thought, oh, well, it's iPad. has been featured in iPad. Let's download it. Yeah, it's a bit expensive. It was absolutely shocking. This, and the only way I could imagine that they got up there was they paid for it. Okay. <laughs> the so the I've thing now, with iPad at least is that you've got some recourse. You can no. give the app back and get a refund. Uh, there is a unofficial con uh, application, but there is an official one For on Android. On yeah. Android, yeah. Okay, interesting. But they'll probably have to if it's it's, a, it's the wrong name, so they probably have to just for, sort that out. But any case, right? Uh, Shall we talk about Warface first? Well, I'll do the neutrino. All right, do. cool. So, um, for those of you who don't remember, there was uh, there was some scientists a while ago who conducted an experiment and found that. Uh, and, and see, seem to have found that they could get a neutrino to move faster than the speed of light. This is a big deal for physicists. Um, some going as far as to say that it would actually mean that causality breaks down. Uh, the, 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 the laws of physics as we know it um, would just break down. So uh, it, was a, it was a fairly big deal. And uh, so there have been multiple... Uh, multiple guys tackling the same experiment. I believe that there were a bunch of scientists to tackle the experiment right after that and got the exact same readings. This was what was so so puzzling. And then the, the, counter, the counter evidence started showing yeah. up. So, uh, so, yeah. So now we've got another example 
of the fact that neutrinos are in fact not faster than the speed of light and reality as we know it is safe. Damn. So, yeah, very sad. Come on, there we had the Matrix proved. <laughs> anyway, uh, Games Warface. Yes, uh, it's just something I saw on the Google Plus stream. This seems to be a first-person shooter, a uh, war, war type of thing that's going to be launching as a free-to-play. Yes, I've hammered some of the other hosts in the past for talking about products that's not launched before. But uh, if you <coughs> watch this trailer and they show you some game, game, uh, gameplay that they're already developing, it's going to be an interesting. You mean move. like the awesome gameplay that uh, Duke Nukem showed? <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting a leg of it. Sorry. No, fair, <laughs> fair. I mean, whatever happened to American Army? Is that still around? Oh, don't tell. American me Army, yeah, yeah. It's, okay, yeah, thank yeah. you. Uh, yeah, no, that was that was a project by the American. Yes. Army. Oh no, it yes. ran. So, so and, and it had sequels and all kinds of stuff. No, that's cool. Strong. Trailer. They actually allowing you to already reserve your nick. Which is, uh, if you want a unique, just, uh, just reserve it. But they're talking about free to play. So we're going to yeah, see how yeah. that goes. The, what, what puts me off immediately it is stuff on the website like a free social FPS service that provides something new every day. Um, yeah. Look, they have to make their money somehow. I guess. Anyway, so uh, powered by CryEngine 3. That's interesting. Cool. So. I was going to since you're talking about games, I have paid for my Diablo 3. <laughs> I want the collector's edition, and they've all sold out oh, before the game on. was even announced. Oh, I paid for it. Oh. I, I saw it. I did the comparison against the local shops, um, and it was considerably cheaper to buy directly from Blizzard. Interesting. I might just do that. Do they have like a digital deluxe edition there? I didn't. I just said there. That's one. I look. I don't buy the collector's editions. I, I have enough crap at home. <laughs> <laughs> I would like them. It's just. It, yeah, just a, and when I looked at the pricing, I of, think the latest edition of, of Mass Effect, it's just a, it's just like a double sized box. But have you seen the it. price difference between the collector's edition and the normal edition? Yeah, let's not go there, because the thing, the thing with Mass Effect, well, I don't know about Diablo. Uh, Diablo is massively more expensive because it's got all kinds of stuff in there. Yeah, but we're talking about like six hundred rand to three thousand rand. No, for the collector's edition, it yes. should not be three thousand rand. It was about two, two grand, so between two grand and three thousand rand no, at the store I looked. No, that's way too expensive. It was under a thousand rand here, but just under. Okay, maybe that's here. because it sold out. There maybe have one or two that they. Perhaps it should not be that expensive. Okay. How much did you pay for your uh, Diablo? About five hundred rand. Uh, yeah. I see Calorius got it on for four hundred rand. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> at least you have it digitally. <laughs> what, what's it? No, yeah, it's about 500 rand. That well, the thing is, yeah, I guess if you buy the actual disc and you link it to your Battle.net account, you'll be able to download it. Yes. Exactly the same as if you bought it from Blizzard anyway. Well, that's oh, well. how Blizzard works. Okay. I, mean. I didn't look too hard, out, but I went to the stores and I did it, so I'm actually quite upset with the store because that's where I saw the two grand as well. Okay. Someone explained stores. collector's editions. Why do you need them is a comment from you the IRC. You don't and need you them. Don't need them. They're you just, just want cool. them. It's the same reason you would get a... Uh, <laughs> No, maybe we shouldn't go there. <laughs> the same reason you would trick out your car. Or you, or, get a you get, <laughs> or you would get gamer swag. When you get yeah. the specialized uh, CDs for, for a musician. And the, you know, and that or you get a vinyl. Personalized. Yeah. yeah. Or you get a vinyl instead of a CD. Okay. For example, well, you probably, if you're that kind of, that kind of uh, music aficionado. Sometimes. Yeah. It's, it, it, it's, for this way, it's, it's, ru it's runner boards and under, under lighting for your cars. The I've got a good example. <laughs> the special edition for Duke Nukem was a lot cooler than the game. Because <laughs> it included some sunglasses, it had the bust, you could use it as a bookend, it had a couple of things in there. So that was a lot cooler than the game. Cool. Cloud storage. Very quickly. Um, I was hoping to talk about this last week. We ran Two out weeks of time. Ago. Two weeks ago, sorry, yeah. Box.com was running a special 50 gig storage. If you just install the Android application on your phone, they give you 50 gigs of storage. Now, um, Hawkeys actually quickly did a comparison today for business purposes between Box.com and Dropbox. And it seems that uh, Dropbox is quite a bit cheaper when you start going into volume. So if you're looking at about 45 people, uh, Dropbox works out, I'm trying to see here quickly, almost two and a half grand cheaper per year, dollars, than- uh, Two and a half thousand dollars. Two and a half thousand dollars cheaper than Box.com. However, Box.com Box has got some very cool features like Directly from your okay, yes, Microsoft applications, you can actually open your box storage and open your document from box, work on it, and save it directly back. Which is I, I do that in Dropbox. Com 
I don't get what you mean. I double click the file that opens in Word. I work on it. it. I control S and it syncs. Yes. Okay. It even syncs versions. I have a quick question for you. Do, mm. do they have a Linux version? No, they don't. <laughs> um, do, do they, yeah, and it's more specifically, do they have a, a command line Linux version? They don't have a Linux version. I know. Which is strange. I, I, I'm like saying, it's, it's like... Which is strange because they have got a Mac client. Not that strange. Targeting Linux can be tricky. It, it depends however, on what you're building. However, late this afternoon, I did realize they've got a, a HTML dev. So can you mount drives in HTML dev? Yes, you, you should, should be able to with Fuse, but you lose a couple of the you use, lose a lot of the functionality, and you then have to use rsync or something else, which I'm doing for another thing that I'm using, and is a damn horrible, horrible mission. So you can get around it. Yeah, but can I drop like I'm doing with Docs oh, now? Okay. I have like it's set up. I have clients on all, all my I'm servers, and I just drop into the folder, and it appears on the server. And then I have scripts that if like. You, if you grabbed the box.com special last week, you could have, or two weeks ago, because it ended the 23rd, you could add 50 gigs of storage, free storage on rocks.com. You then add your 15 gigs of storage on SkyDrive. Yeah, but yeah. now you split across two services. Doesn't matter. Then when you give up this Macintosh and Unix worlds and you join the Windows domain, you've got a product like Gladinet, which is free, which then actually makes a drive left on your machine that connects to all these storages. And your problems are, are, are they bound? Yes, they are. So it's one drive? I, have, I am currently running a 150 gig backup, which actually will then, it's not really a backup. It synchronizes all my files into that storage cloud, and it will actually then bound to the next storage when the first one falls mm. up. Yeah, I can see that that'll, that'll serve, that'll serve the, those needs. But like, if I'm on the move, I need to know on which service my files are. So if, I'm, if I whip out my phone and I'm like, okay, I'm looking for this file or my iPad. I'm on, just before I bought you're the plane. You're talking about iPhone. Yeah, you see on Android, when you've got the box and the Dropbox installed, you actually search through both the storage environments. So if you're looking for a file, you can just search. Including SkyDrive. Off you go. Now, I would never use SkyDrive on, a, on an Android. <laughs> but that's uh, what you're talking you? about, linking SkyDrive and Box to. Yeah, but that's where you use SkyDrive just as a backup area. Just Look, just the reason I, I use um, Dropbox is it synchronizes everything. No, if I want a bit large storage on, on the cloud, I have servers. And servers are not, you know, to get a cheap server with enough storage is not that expensive. And then you can run rsync and all these really cool things that will actually synchronize all these things properly if I'm wanting to synchronize against my, for my desktop. Okay. Um, never mind that, I can push it across to my, my ADSL line into my server at home, which I've got several gigs sitting there yeah, no, but setting okay. up an oh, R-Sync right. to do that is, no, is a lot trickier than I want something that's easy to install it just works yes I just install on all my things um, I can share with you know I can share folders with all my friends no matter what client they are no matter where they are they can get it um, I just point my folks know how Dropbox works and that's that's it, that's the pain that's taken away this whole Dropbox thing about, okay. you know, oh, I've got drive and you've got this thing and a Windows and opens a drive. It's like, well, I have that. It's called rsync and I have servers. It's, 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 I have Dropbox for what Dropbox does so beautifully. It's invisible and it works. Okay. Sorry. Okay. How much Dropbox storage have you got? Six. I'm on 14, so catch up. Yeah, but some of yours is going to disappear. Ah, I will And then, you, then you're going to hurt. No, nah, I'm See how much it costs. Sorry? You see how much it costs? It's a, what, I think it's $100 per year. Month. Uh, it's a yellow option. I'll go through it again. Cool. Um, I'm sure they will renew my, my special offer. Cool. Uh, Cheetah Robot? Anybody? It is time for the kicker. Yes. yes. So, our first kicker is a Cheetah Robot. Go watch it run. It a what? A, a, a robot that runs 18 miles per hour. What's that in an actual measuring system? 18 MPH in KPH, in KMH. There we go. Okay, we're waiting for Google to give you answers. <laughs> yes. While okay, you're doing that, I'm going to do the other one, which is some guy who had lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of time on their hand yeah. and a lot of snails and some LED lights. And he went off and he, he made the LED lights with the press stick and, and a battery and he pasted them all on the back of the snails and he made himself, like with all these snails moving, moving in these like uh, troughs, need, yeah. he made a big picture of a snail. Check it. So that's actual real snails moving yes. around in a... With LED lights in their back. 
Uh, it's just slimy. You just got way too much top. I mean, but it's throw, cool. a, throw a bag of it's salt onto that one and oh, see what happens. Oh, shame. Come on. That's mean, bro. It's snails. <laughs> but they've What's helped that? you. What and are these all the escaped friends. ones around it? Are no, there's other snails. Are these all the escaped ones around it? No, what? but they're different lights. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, that's a kicker. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's awesome. So how quick is this cheetah? 30 kilometers an hour, almost. 29. Yeah. Second for how long? Rough, roughly. As it's a robot. It just keeps going and <laughs> going. Until the batteries are not. <laughs> it's actually a team. Cure cells. It seems to be linked up to a power source. So this is a... So, these guys, as long as <laughs> 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 so, so these guys, yeah, it's running on a treadmill. So, so what, what's that, that old joke? You just need to run fast than the guy next to you? Yeah. You just need to run fast uh, long enough that you can uh, bypass the lead. Yes. So, um, so this, this, this cheetah is running on a, on a treadmill at 29 kilometers an hour. <laughs> Wait. And it's, it's, it's Department of Defense sponsored research. So he's now on a treadmill. <laughs> it gets worse. No, wait. Does well, it even uh, look like a cheetah? Yeah. Yes. It looks like it, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> it's bigger than a cheetah. So it's a sort but of a cheetah. Ha, 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 than a cheetah. Said this, I know the top speed for humans. Like this is the, 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 the runners in the 100 meter who break world records. Yeah. They hit close to 30. They hit about 29, apparently 29 kilometers per hour. So look, you're not going to outrun this thing. No, you are. No, no. Because you, it's on a treadmill. <laughs> what I mean is you need to make sure that you have a bit of a head start. The, the reason it's on a treadmill be, is you need to measure how fast it's running somehow. you just got to be off the treadmill no, and you'll because win. Because it has a cable. <laughs> <laughs> and once it hits the end of the cable, it, it goes off. <laughs> so robot. that's why you have a treadmill, so you can keep on running. <laughs> okay, that was funny. <sighs> Are we back? Okay, you know what? What was the first story about the batteries? <laughs> so maybe, yeah. maybe the first story I'm could actually sure, help the last story. I'm pretty story. sure slapping a graphene battery on this thing isn't going to work. To get it somewhere. Because <laughs> at the well, moment... Look, it, it might allow, allow it to catch you. This thing needs one of those Iron Man power source things. There we go. Because yeah. this thing is going to get oh, nowhere yes. very quickly. <laughs> so I thought you were talking about Iron Man, the, the running race. I'm going, what? No, what? Man? Blade Runner. No, there's, no, no, no. There's Iron a, Man, the... The, oh, the competition. Yes. Uh, okay. All Jeff, right. See, that's sort of what it looks like. That doesn't look like a cheetah. It sort of looks like a cheetah. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. thank you guys. That was just awesome. <laughs> Thanks for the cheetah. All right. Uh, with that, where can we find you, on Friday. Uh, Jan? Where can people find me? That's a good question. Don't find me. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Jan VZA. I am also the staff writer at my broadband. Direct your ire that way. It even has an email address, staff writer at my broadband dot zero zero. Um, I have my own email address there, but, you know, um, we'll... <laughs> you know, the staff write is quicker. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, and I write for my broadband. So, uh, hence the staff writer joke. Cool. Done. Well, if you're sending a cheetah off to me, don't find me. <laughs> Otherwise, you can find, just find me at my blog, blog.who-else.co.za. There's some new What's stories on there. If you send a cheetah off to you, just put further than the cable. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Reminds me of those cartoons where you've got where you've got the, the, the mean little you know Bugs Bunny character standing just outside the leash range of the dog. <laughs> cool. Uh, and you can find me on Let's Talk Network and sometimes on Twitter, but not so much anymore. Why not? Time. I'm on Google Plus, by the way. If anybody wants to, you can just search for my name. You so we there. and I must update links. I have too much work to do. <laughs> cool. Right. And you're not on Google Plus anymore, but maybe we should touch on that in another show. Oh, no, I'm not on Google Plus or Facebook on my phones anymore. I'm still on them. Just I realized that they were just trying battery life and not doing anything and giving me all these annoying pop-ups about stuff I actually didn't care about. That's for another show. Yes. Thank you for watching and listening. <laughs>